All right. So welcome over you to, uh, to this uh, last session of the conference. Uh, second session on side channel analysis and leakage resilience. And so the first uh, talk is, uh, is a tale of two shares, why two share threshold implementation seems worthwhile and why it is not by Khan Chen, uh, Mohamed Fermani, and Thomas Eisenbart, all from uh, Washington Polytechnic Institute. And the uh, presentation will be made by Khan. Thanks for the introduction. And in this work, we attempted to use only two shares to achieve a first order threshold implementation. And we discuss uh, what benefits we can get from this share reduction and what are the prices we must pay. So first of all is the motivation of this work. So the current deployment of Internet of Things has some special needs in terms of cryptography uh, because of its resource constrained nature. And compared with the uh, conventional cryptography, uh, lightweight cryptography is considered uh, better suited for the, uh, this constrained applications. So in addition to the resistance against the mathematical analysis, uh, the physical imp implementations of those algorithms should be uh, resist against physical attacks. For example, set channel attacks, which is uh, of interest in this work. And of course, the set channel leakage resistance does not come for free. And usually the countermeasure will use, introduce uh, a lot of overhead. So uh, motivated by, uh, by the need for a more efficient and secure implementation, uh, in this work, we study one of the most popular uh, countermeasure and aims to uh, bring down the cost in terms of area and randomness used. So the state-of-art uh, countermeasure is the masking scheme called threshold implementation, uh, which is based on secret sharing and multi-party computation. And the basic idea of threshold implementation is to split the uh, intermediate variables and functions into uh, different shares. And a valid sharing of uh, TI should satisfy three uh, requirements, uh, which are correctness, non complicitness and uniformity. And here, one of the most important is the non completeness means that each shared function should be independent of at least one input share. For example, in this uh, first order threshold implementation in this figure, uh, one shared function F1 uh, only process uh, the input share two and three, and is independent of the share one. And similarly, function, uh, shared function F2 and F3 are also non-complete. And uniformity means that the output shares Z should be also uniform, such that uh, in the next stage, the TI is still valid. So, of course, this comes with an increase in overhead. Uh, this is not exactly triple of the unprotected implementation, but it gives you an idea that uh, the overhead should be related with the number of shares you used in your uh, TI implementation. So, it, it has been shown that uh, in a D prob model, uh, uh, at least T times D plus one shares should be used to provide uh, this uh, order protection. T here means the algebraic degree of the nonlinear function, and the D means the protection order you want to achieve. And two recent work has shown that actually we can reduce the number of shares to D plus one uh, if we can relax some restrictions to construct a TI. And uh, in this, uh, and after when you uh, bring down the number of shares, the area of the implement implementation can be greatly uh, reduced. So in this work, we continue uh, with this direction to uh, reduce the number of shares. But uh, the difference is, uh, first of all, uh, we are not going to give a very generic construction uh, uh, for any arbitrary function or at any arbit arbitrary um, protection order and we focus on the first order protection only. And second of all, in those uh, previous works, even though the area is reduced, but it shows that the number of the ran randomness is uh, in increased. So in this work, we are trying to reduce the randomness required for TI. And in the end, uh, we are particularly interested in a lightweight cryptography 
and we want to show that uh, TA is actually a very nice fit uh, for lightweight cryptography to uh, counteract such kind of attacks. So uh, here we used uh, an essay, Cypher Salmon, as a case study. Salmon is a very straightforward block cipher. It's very simple and it consists of only uh, like three cyclic rotation, uh, one multiplication in binary field, and three uh, exclusive OR operations. So it has many interesting features, makes it a very good target for threshold implementation. So as you can see, the, this end operation only has an algebraic degree of two, and, and plus salmon can be a fully bit serialized, means that actually uh, our implementation, the hardware implementation can process only one bit uh, clock cycle, and this way we can minimize uh, the resource used to uh, implement a hardware of salmon. So now I'll go to how can we uh, use TwoShare to implement a TI. So actually, this is very easy and very trivial for the linear function. For example, the XOR uh, in a three shared TI is very straightforward. We just use three XORs and we also split the variables into three shares as long as the input shares are uniformly distributed and independently. And this is actually a valid TI and there will be no uh, section of leakage. And the two share version is, is quite straightforward. Just remove one of them. And still the, the three requirements for uh, constructing a valid TI is still there. It's present is non-complete and uniform. Actually, this is not Surprising because even in today's uh, three share TI, uh, people always use two share for linear functions. It's only when it comes to uh, nonlinear functions, uh, the shares are extended to three shares or more. So the, the challenging part is the nonlinear function. For example, in Salmon, we have this nonlinear part, which is A times B plus C. And one way to uh, develop a two share TI is to enforce each variable to have only two shares. So we can compute uh, Z by compute Z1 and Z2 and use those two equations. But the problem here is the two shared functions are not independent of the input shares anymore. For example, Z2 right now is dependent on A2 and A1, which are the two shares of A. And this might be a problem when uh, glitches exist in, uh, in our circuit and may uh, leaks at first order. So uh, to, uh, to solve this problem, uh, our solution is uh, we can pipeline this operation, which means we can break the calculation into two stages. And in the first stage, we only compute the, the calculation in the, in the parentheses. And notice that this calculation is only depends on one share. So, you can see the intermediate is actually is A2 plus P2 for C2, and on the, 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 on the other hand is A1 times B1 plus C1. So up to now, uh, the non-completeness is satisfied because each share of the function is independent of at least one input share. And uniformity is also achieved because here C can be uniformly uh, uh, split, so the both shared function, the output is uniform. And now, and after that, the result will be saved in, uh, in two registers. And in the second stage, uh, we finish the rest of the computation. And uh, if you notice, if you can notice that the second stage is also uh, non-complete and uh, uniform and correct. So in this way, by breaking this calculation into two stages, and we make those three requirements uh, satisfied. And now we compare this with three share uh, implementation. So right now we only have two shares for each variable. So of course we need only uh, less random numbers to share the intermediates. And we also need less logic oper operations because here we only use four end operation and four XOR, uh, which in three share we need more. And, but we need two extra flip-flops here to store the intermediates. 
Well, this seems to uh, cost more, but actually when you consider you need uh, flip-flops to store B2, all the shares of the inputs and all outputs, actually in, in some, we still save, save some uh, storage here. Uh, another thing is the computation use two stages, but if, we can, if this calculation can be pipelined, uh, actually we don't uh, lose too much. So, so far everything seems good, and two share seems beat three share, but uh, one pro potential problem is that the two share TI shows very strong second order leakage. Here I use a, a, a sharing of one bit, for example. Suppose we have a binary value X, which could be zero and be one. If we use two share, two share X to zero, it could be a zero and a zero, or be one one. And assuming the Hamming weight model and a, a common Gaussian noise, the blue curve is the leakage uh, density uh, probability density function for x equals to zero. And if x equals to one and you use two sharing, the leakage and density function should be the red curve, I mean, in the left, in the left figure. So both dis distributions have the same means, which means at the first order moment, they are equal. Uh, okay, okay, okay. But at the second order, they can be easily distinguished, which means if you use two share, x can be easily distinguished using the second order moment. But this is not the case for, uh, for three share TI. And as you can see, the, the two distributions, are the, the shape of the two distributions, two distributions actually are the same, it's just mirrored. So the, the means and the variance are the same. So surprisingly, three, t, three share TI is intended for the first order protection, but it can provide a certain level of second order resistance. Okay, thank you. So uh, we will uh, use uh, a practical uh, set channel leakage analysis to verify uh, this problem later. So now we want to uh, shortly introduce uh, we, uh, the application on salmon. So the first application is a round-based salmon, which means uh, our implementation can precise the whole, whole block in one round, uh, unlike the bit ser serialized version. And this calculation is also broken into two stages. And here the solid line means the first stage, and the, the dotted line means the second stage. And in both stages, we make sure that the three requirements are satisfied to make it a valid TI implementation. But the, this implementation is not a pipeline version because at each clock cycle, the output will be written back to the registers. So which means each round will you, uh, use exactly, exactly two clock cycles. So the whole encryptions will use uh, as, twice, as twice many as clock cycles uh, as the unprotected salmon. So another implementation is the bit serialized, which means uh, the implementation can process only one bit per clock cycle. So the left part is a shift registers used to hold the, the blocks. And what it does is, is keep rotating the bits uh, for the uh, combinational logic. So now let's focus on the combinational logic. Actually, here you can see a register which is inserted into the, into the logic and to divide it into two stages, and just like what we discussed. And now it's, uh, uh, it satisfies the three requirements. And it's a bit serialized, which means it could be small because all the logic here only process only one bit, not the whole block. And it can be pipelined, so which means actually it just use one more clock cycle uh, to process one round compared with the unprotected bit serialized salmon. So next we want to introduce the implementation results in terms of FPGA and numbers. So here we have two implementations. Uh, round-based salmon and bit serialized salmon. And for each one, 
we implemented the unprotected, which is the yellow color, and, and the two share, which is the red color, and the three share version, which is the gray color. And you can see that for our two TI implementation, it saves about one third of the slice registers, but not exactly one third because both of the implementations have some common control logic, and also uh, we also have uh, some uh, insert some uh, registers uh, for pipelining. So for slice loose used, we have similar results, and. In terms of throughput, uh, the round-based salmon, the 2TI round-based salmon, uh, because it needs two clock cycles for each round, so the middle one, the, the 2TI, is only half of the throughput compared with the, the unprotected version. And for the bit serialized, because we use pipeline, actually, it's very close to the unprotected uh, bit serialized version. So leak analysis. So leak analysis, we have two parts. The first part is the theoretical analysis use the simulation, simulated uh, power consumption. Here we do not use uh, salmon anymore. Uh, we use another lightweight block zephyr uh, present. And we implement a two TI present. And we target at the Xbox output. And we use the Hemingway leak model. Uh, uh, assuming there's no, 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 uh, no noise. And we also perform first, and first order and second order analysis using the t-test 2 and uh, the practical CP attack. So here's the, the first order analysis on the present S-Box. So the left one is used the first order t-test and the, the red curve is always below the, the 4.5 which means that our 2 TI of present doesn't show any first order leakage. Uh, similar, similarly, in the CPA, the red curve corresponds to the correlation between the uh, leakage model and the real leakage uh, using the correct key. As you can see, it's, it cannot be distinguished. Even you use about one million traces. But at the second order, things is different. So using second order t-test, you can see with only 200 traces, the t-test value is already go beyond 4.5, which means that there's a strong second order leakage uh, in our 2TI present. And similarly, in two second order CPA, it also uses uh, less than hundreds of traces to uh, recover the correct key. And the next step, we uh, performed a practical analysis. I mean, we. We have three targets, which are 2TI round-based salmon and 3TI round-based salmon, and the last one is 2TI present. And we ported our design to the uh, one of the popular uh, set channel evaluation platform, and we take measurement and perform the uh, leakage analysis. So the first analysis is um, uh, first order t-test and second order t-test on the measurement from the 2TI salmon. So on the left one is the first order t-test. Uh, you may find that uh, with about 10 million traces, the, the x-axis shows the number of traces we used, and even with 10 million traces, uh, the t-value is, is still below 4.5, which indicates um, there's no leakage. And, but uh, in comparison, the second order t-test is only 400 uh, less than 600, uh, we already s saw a very strong T value, showing that there's strong second order leakage. Uh, in, compar in comparison, we look at the 3TI. Uh, th 3TI of the salmon doesn't show any first order leakage, which is not surprising because it's aimed to protect the first order attack against the first order attack. But um, it also can provide a certain level of uh, second order uh, set channel leakage resistance uh, because as you can see when the number of traces increases to 10 million uh, the T value is still below 4.5 uh, but for 2TI it's, it's way below about 4.5 so which means even though our 2TI saves some area and 
randomness, but in terms of set channel protection, uh, 3TI has its uh, advantage over 2TI. Okay, so previous, uh, previous analysis, I just used t-test. Now we want to exploit, exploit this leakage, use practical CPA, and so the first target is 2TI7, and we perform second order CPA, and use about two million traces. Um, the correct key can be distinguished to, to close to three million traces. The correct key can be distinguished, um, which means this leakage can be uh, exploited with about three million traces. And for t uh, two TI present, we use less traces, about one million, to recover uh, eight bit keys, uh, sub keys. And the thing is, uh, from the t-test, we only use hundreds, less than 1,000 traces to show that there's leakage, but uh, when we performing, when we perform the practical CPA, it uses millions of traces. I think one of the reasons that uh, CPA is not the most efficient attack, because we are assuming a having weight model, which is not the best model. So we are hoping that if we perform the, the template attack or other profiled attack, we can improve the effic efficiency of our attack. Yeah, in conclusion, and we, we attempted to introduce a, a 2TI uh, to share threshold implementation to reduce the area and the randomness, randomness required. And at the meantime, we, w we want to maintain the performance, and the results show that uh, we achieve our goal. And second, uh, threshold Im implementation is quite fit for lightweight cryptography since uh, their uh, degree of their nonlinear function is very low and the operation is quite simple. And we also show that the, our 2TI can protect against the first order attack, but it shows strong second order leakage compared with the traditional 3TI. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, just a little time for questions or comments. Thank you. Can you go to the slide that you showed the PDFs, the distribution functions of the second order masking and third order masking? Uh, yeah, here. I think the microphone is, does it work? Yeah, okay. Um, you know, in the right side with the three shirt TI, uh, as far as I understood, you have the simulation of the second order masking, second order Boolean masking, right? Mm -hmm. Then you don't have the second order leakage here for sure. As your distributions are here, actually they, uh, they have the same uh, standard deviations, right? Then in the case of TI, yeah, in the case of TI, um, you, you have three shares, mm -hmm. but the, um, the quadratic functions that you implement in TI mm -hmm. will provide second order leakage for you. Mm -hmm. Means that these figures that you have are not related to TI, they are just second order masking and first order masking. In the case of TI uh, uh, with three shares, you have a still um, second order leakage because you have the, you have the quadratic functions mm -hmm. and definitely the, the um, standard deviations of the distributions will be different in case of 3TI. Yes. Three, three and yes. because you explained here this is a 3TI, and then there is no second order leakage. But actually, there is second order leakage is yes, yes, in 3TI. Yeah. OK? OK. Uh, one more point is, is the, um, um, the bit serialized architecture that you made for, um, for Simon, mm -hmm. right? Can you go back to that slide that you have the bit serialized architecture of the um, of this with, with two shares, two TI, the, the design? This one? Yeah, I believe this one. Yeah. Um, in the case of two TI, if you don't use the fresh randomness mm -hmm. that you don't use here, right, as far as I know. No. If you don't use the fresh randomness and then you have the serialized architecture, bit serialized architecture, you are overwriting the data on itself, right? I mean, you're shifting the data. Mm -hmm. And that at the first rounds of the assignment, it's not a problem. The data are completely independent of each other, the masks. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of rounds, they are completely mixed. And then the, um, 
adjacent, actually, the neighbor data which are saving the registers, they are not completely in a masking way, I mean, with, a, uh, with respect to the masking, they are not independent of each other. And then if you uh, store them on each other, I mean, they override them because of their rotating, mm -hmm. because of the shifting, you will exhibit first order leakage. Yeah, this is already known that if, uh, and, and, and actually this, is, this will happen in the last rounds of the Simon. If you consider only the T-test in the first rounds, let's say a couple of first rounds, it doesn't happen. But in the last rounds, because they are mere, ver, um, uh, more uh, mixed together, then you, have, you explic, uh, exhibit the first order leakage. So which means we should add a refreshing layer maybe in the last few rounds. You, or you should have the, the pipeline architecture for this one as well. means that two consecutive plain texts of Simon are going to the, uh, to the this system, and then in the rotating, when you are shifting, you are not overwriting the data of the same, let's say, a state on each yes. other. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Come in. All right, let's send the speaker again.